this is a really easy case, but we'll do it anyway. Notice here's the brain. Notice these delicate little uh, membranes here are the arachnoid mater. Notice that the meninges are very cloudy along here and appear to have a thick, perhaps almost a pus-like exudate. Uh, actually, it is a pus-like exudate. This is swelling of the cloudy swelling of the meninges due to acute inflammation of the meninges, otherwise known as meningitis. I'm going to go out on a limb here just to make your life a little bit simple. Whereas most primary inflammations of the brain proper, primarily limited to the brain, are caused by viruses, most of the inflammations of the meninges are primarily limited to the meninges are caused by bacteria. Now, meningitis can extend into the brain and cephalitis can extend into the meninges. And if you did, perhaps you would like to use the word meningoencephalitis to uh, really notify, uh, show that really both areas are involved. But in this particular case, the brain is relatively normal and it's just the meninges that uh, are very, very much inflamed. They are inflamed because they have these little collections of neutrophils all throughout the meninges. Here's a solid little ball of uh, leukocytes. All of these are leukocytes. This is why the brain looked like pus and uh, the meninges were thickened and cloudy. If this was a... Uh, child less than two years old, perhaps Haemophilus would be the first bacteria on your mind. If this was part of an epidemic, you might expect Neisseria as being the bacteria involved. And of course, in older people, some of the other gram-negative bacteria would be a cause of meningitis. But just to, as a general rule, most meningitis is bacterial cause due a lumbar puncture and you'll probably be able to figure out which it is if it's not apparent already. Thank you very much.